still on this never-ending route 119 and oh don't tell me they finally fixed the spelling of elixir as you are probably aware and i nitpicked about it a lot during the first two pokemon lps i did but now it appears that the problem is gone anyway this is going to be this time of the year again less than two weeks from now the third annual Speed Gamers Mother Marathon will be underway and they're going to be raising money for the same charity as last time, Susan G. Komen for the Cure, a charity that supports research on breast cancer, and of course it's going to be on the weekend of Mother's Day because, you know, it all joins itself together. Mother Marathon on the weekend of Mother's Day for the research against breast cancer, which is the most common form of cancer in women, and it, contrary to what you might believe, it's not non-existent in men. I, 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 I would, I would want to see what's going on inside the, the, the head of a man who's been diagnosed with breast cancer. Like, are you kidding me? I'm a guy. I can't have breast cancer. But yes, it happens. But it's a lot less common and it's uh, not uh, as commonly diagnosed even among those who do have it because, well, no one ever thinks of looking for signs of breast cancer in men. But <laughs> once again, I am going completely off track. Uh, the Speed Gamers are going to be playing the Mother Trilogy, of course, Mother, Earthbound, and Mother 3 as well. And they're going to increase the difficulty level from last year, because last year it was a 72-hour marathon, and this time it's only going to last 48 hours. Now, 48 hours was about the time that it took to beat all three games last year, and they filled the time with a blind run of Earthbound. And if you thought Metroid Prime 2 was painful, you haven't seen that blind run of Earthbound. It was honestly really painful to watch, and not only because my opinion of Earthbound isn't 100% favorable, I'll come back to it later, but uh, yeah, the, the, the guy clearly didn't know what he was doing uh, at one point, I think uh, at the end of the marathon, he was completely stuck in uh, the Return to Onnit segment and couldn't get past all the rabid beasties that lurk there. He couldn't handle, you know, the, the, the system of the rolling HP counter in order to survive attacks that uh, would have been otherwise fatal. And as a result, he died and died and died and died. So at least we're gonna be spared that this year. But can they really defeat uh, the entire trilogy in 48 hours with everything on the line? We'll see. And no, I'm not going to learn Slash, thank you very much. When would I ever need to use Slash between Plane Thrower and Double Kick? And I'm going to upgrade it to Brick Break once I actually uh, get the TM. But yeah, the marathon is going to begin on May 7th at the 7 p.m. Eastern at thespeedgamers.com. And if you're not sure because you live in another, in another time zone, then just uh, tell me where you live and I'll tell you the hour at which it begins because I have a map with all the time zones in the world, so there's really nothing I can't handle. And if you arrive like 15 minutes late, don't worry because their marathons always start late for some reason. They always have technical difficulties that force them to start a little late. We all remember the controversy that happened in the last Pokemon Marathon as to whether they actually did it in 72 hours or not. Oh, and these awkward runs here are blocking the path to Fortree and actually they are meaning to block entrance to the Weather Institute, but if they want to block the entrance of the Weather Institute, why don't they just block the front door instead of blocking one of the two paths that lead to it? How incompetent are those guys? Well, maybe that's why I always end up beating up the, those evil crime syndicates because the grunts just aren't competent enough. So there's a PC and a bed to heal here, and I am going to deposit uh, the lily I have in my party right now since it's not useful at all, it does absolutely nothing, and I'm going to be getting a cat form as a prize for beating this place. And along with, of course, the right to continue further. So after healing, we're gonna take on a couple of uh, 
Aqua grunts here. And as this one ponders what I'm doing here, I will give you the rundown on what they are doing here. Basically, I just mentioned cast form. Well, obviously, they have a lot of interest in cast form since it's closely related to weather. Supposedly, it can control the weather at will, but it's more like it's being controlled with the weather, with its ability forecast, which can change its type and appearance depending on the weather, except for Sandstorm. There's no Sandstorm form on cast form for some reason, which is completely stupid if you ask me, but oh well. But the idea is that they are interested in cast form because it can control the weather, but we're not talking about permanent weather effect here, we're only talking about something that lasts a couple turns. And, uh, of course, since it's Team Aqua we're talking about, they're only interested in rain. So, if I were them, instead of invading all kinds of places to, uh, to, to get Pokemon that uh, won't help them too much, well, they already own half of the world's population of Carvana. So why don't they just get some Rain Dance TMs, teach them to those Carvanas, and that's it! Here you go, your own rainy Armageddon of death. And speaking of Carvana, you probably noticed that I'm using Flamethrower on them. I can afford it since, well, have you seen uh, Carvana's defenses? Paper thin isn't even the right word to describe those defenses. I, I've once seen a Carvana get confused and kill itself in two blows from full HP. I'm not making this up. Carvana's defenses are that horrible. But anyway, the reason I'm not using Double Kick on those guys is because of, well, their ability, Rough Skin, which does some damage to me every time I use a Contact Attack, so I want to avoid that at all costs, and as you just saw, Flamethrowers knock out those Carvanas easily enough, so Flamethrower it is there. But I wasn't quite done talking about the Marathon because I just wanted to underline how good they are at putting on a show. Because, I'll be honest, the Mother series aren't my cup of tea. I know uh, they rely a lot on weird humor to get the fun factor across, but that is just not my kind of thing at all. Especially Earthbound, it's, it just comes across to me as you know, Big Lift Alligator Moment after Big Lift Alligator Moment after Big Lift Alligator Moment. In fact, Earthbound could be qualified as just one big Big Lift Alligator Moment. So basically, playing Mother Games for me is a, is a chore. Watching someone else play Mother Games should be, on principle, an even bigger chore. But those guys are so good at what they do that I honestly don't care. They could be playing Pong for a week and I would still watch it. So that's how good they are. So anyway, don't expect any new videos from me on the, the weekend of Mother's Day. And whenever that Rube TSG of Wind Waker comes out, and I'm not going to be doing any videos for a while either because it's going to be a playthrough of Wind Waker. It's going to be naturally very, very long to watch. It is, after all, Wind Waker. And I'm not necessarily referring to all the sailing, but even without the sailing, it would be a much longer game than the original Zelda or A Link to the Past to begin with. So, that's gonna be it for today, this is the last guy I'm gonna beat today, and in the next video, I'm going to take on two boss fights back-to-back, -back. Aqua, Admin, Shelly, and after that, May Battle number 4, you definitely wanna be there. The big Lip Talent Moment!